All right, guys, Tash Grub here back again today. Hope you're all enjoying your Sunday. Today, a couple of very interesting topics to discuss. Wanted to focus it mainly around, though, the hottest takes that I've seen for the upcoming season. There was a pretty interesting Reddit thread that I'll leave linked down below that you guys can go and check out. Talking about hot takes for the upcoming season. Of course, the CDL is just around the corner. January the 24th, it begins in Minnesota. And after that, pretty much every weekend or, with you know, weekend here, weekend there, and then maybe a weekend off in between, we're going to have Call of Duty action every single week at, you know, weekend events for the entire season so then it really does kick off um, but yeah of course the question is what's going to happen in the upcoming season which teams are we expecting to be good that might not be so good which teams are we expecting to maybe be mediocre that could you know put on a run and potentially win the mid-season playoffs or championships or be really competitive in the league a league format often you know changes things up right you, typically in Call of Duty and in esports more generally when you have a league you have teams that maybe you wouldn't expect to do so well in an event style but in a league kind of format and you know obviously see this is an interesting situation we have here we're kind of combining an event format and a league with a weekend event being you know giving you points depending on where you place so it'd be interesting to see how the league shakes up in terms of uh, the teams we expect to be really good but maybe some dark horse teams that can put up a run and you know consistently come you know top three top four in these tournaments so you know that's what we're going to discuss today leave all your hot takes down in the comment section below I'm sure um, you'll have it you'll have a feast with it down there like if you guys enjoy the video as well of course ramping up to um to the season it would be great to you know symbol like on the video is fantastic for helping the youtube algorithm promote these videos out to a new audience which we're hoping to do to grow the channel in the upcoming season so yeah that would be greatly appreciated let's hop into it then so battle beaver customs first of all thanks for, to uh, mike for pointing this out to me if you guys would like to follow me on twitter and help point things as similar things you see on twitter out to me that would be greatly appreciated helps me make these videos um you know as good as they can be so gunless says also to celebrate the partnership with battle beaver i'll be giving away a controller the winner will be picked January the 6th uh, which is tomorrow so I guess uh, if you guys want to go find this tweet and retweet it and do whatever you have to do um, then you know there's a chance you can still win but Battle Viva Customs of course now sponsoring Gunless very interesting given that we have seen in past seasons Scuff has sponsored the league even though some of the players have sneakily I'm not sure if it's um, technically been allowed I guess it is allowed but they're just not allowed to say it publicly they've been using Battle Viva Customs controllers um, but you know the league has been sponsored by Scuff so pretty interesting and uh, Gunless is another one of the players that appreciates the Battle Beaver controller. So yeah, I, I, from what I've heard, I think a lot of people really appreciate the Battle Beaver controllers much better than Scuff, um, which has kind of been the biggest name. So I thought it was pretty interesting into the upcoming season seeing Gunless being sponsored by them as well. Wanted to show you guys this as well from a MemZYS pointed this out to me on Twitter. So this is the April 18th, 19th um, Seattle Surge event. Now um, I imagine the details here are going to change given it says featuring the six top league, you know, Call of Duty League teams, Huntsman, Royal Ravens, Gorillas, Minnesota Rock, Los Angeles, and Seattle Surge. Now we know that there's going to be at least eight teams at every weekend, so two other ones will be coming here. But what it does say quite clearly is a 64-team Challengers tournament. Now, we haven't had too much info yet about the individual, you know, events around the world and whether they're going to be putting on Challengers events. From our understanding, Activision has kind of taken a back seat and said, you guys can do whatever the hell you want as an organization. You know, you're putting on the event it's, it's your thing it's your brand and if you want to run a challenges tournament along the side you can do that as well so it seems like Seattle Surge are you know happy to go for it there's a hell of a lot of teams signed up to play um the, the modern warfare not modern warfare the opening modern warfare event in Minnesota there's a load of teams already signed up like 192 or something I think Seattle Surge is trying for a 64 team minimum um so yeah very interesting I thought I'd you know I hadn't seen this yet on any website that explicitly said that they were having it so if you're thinking of playing or whatever uh, Seattle Surge 2020 April and 18th and 19th is probably um, going to be your home but as I say these details likely will be updated going forwards I uh, just wanted to show you this then before we get onto the hot take people have figured out how to abuse the slide cancel mechanics of this game already pair that with an mp5 and holy a little glitch is a core mechanic of the game can we go back to the dolphin dive get rid of this movement bs always hurts the game every year there's always some movement shenanigans and I guess uh, that's a frustration with modern warfare of course but it also leads kind of nicely into uh, the hot take discussion I suppose because uh, this really relates to some of the teams I imagine that some of the cracked out SMG players um, and lately a lot of people have been saying that that Atlanta team is getting better and better all the time and you can go over and have a look at Dallas Empire considered to I guess be the strongest team in the league at least to have been winning all the opening tournaments and all of this sort of stuff but at what point is their reign not necessarily going to come to an end but I think other teams are catching up to them a lot of people are saying that Atlanta well occasionally they'll get smoked by Dallas 
Empire in scrims, you know, they can take series off Dallas Empire and do really well. And I think part of that is as Octane gets into here, the slide cancel, you know, mechanics with the MP5, those guys on that uh, Atlanta team, it was a pretty big risk, right, that Atlanta phase took, picking up all these young guys, Simp, Abizi, you know, Priester, um, Major Maniac, and, you know, all of this lot. Celium, of course, being the final one, all kind of cracked out younger guys. And in my opinion, it's still uncertain exactly what's going to happen. They do have Crowder behind them, though, who I'm sure is, you know, acting as a real rock and of, of experience and veteran leadership in that team, even from behind the scenes. So I think that was a really big pickup for them. Um, and, you know, pairing that with their cracked out nature, what they've done in previous games with the slide cancel mechanics people are, you know, finding out. And that's what makes this game really interesting. Right? I'm not exactly sure it will play quite like World War II. Like, World War II was kind of slow, kind of methodical, but there's not too much you could do with the movement in that game to really abuse anything. You could do the, the punch uh, dive kind of mechanic that, uh, that Slash is talking about here, but you couldn't do the sliding and, you know, weird stuff, almost like glitch mechanics, especially with the 12 hertz the way it is, with the, um, you know, the, I guess, what's it called, Pika's advantage, I suppose, when you can slide around the corner and cancel it, and it'll really throw off the, you know, camera ring, I guess, is the word I was looking for, for the other player. Really makes it struggle, like, if you're holding an angle, someone slide cancels kind of around a corner with an MP5, you can get destroyed in a heartbeat with, you know, out even seeing them, pretty much. And mechanics like that coming into the game that we didn't really have in the last slow boots on the ground game being, you know, World War II means how will this game play? Will it play not necessarily like a jetpack game, but on LAN, will it end up playing to the benefit and to the favour of the cracked out younger guys that are, you know, really play at a high tempo? And maybe we're seeing that now with Atlanta Phase getting, getting to a high gear. And that's kind of not necessarily a hot take I wanted to throw out there, but kind of some ideas to kick us off here. So these are the participants for the upcoming season. This is what we're looking at in terms of the competitive landscape. Uh, Atlanta Phase, Chicago Huntsman, Dallas Empire, Mutineers, you know, Royal Ravens, etc, etc, etc. There's some of these teams that we would imagine are going to be really, really strong. The likes of Dallas Empire, Huntsman, and Phase, uh, I think are the top three in most people's estimations right now. What are your thoughts on where the Dallas Empire will be? Of course, they're considered largely to be the strongest team in the game. Where will they end up, right? Will they end up being not necessarily a mediocre team, but will they not be as good as people are suggesting? What about the Huntsman? What about Atlanta Phase? And just wanted to say real quick, thanks uh, very much. A couple of days ago, I talked about um, the, the Chino situation with him getting removed from the Optic Gaming Academy due to the fact that each team has to have a dedicated six man at each event that can substitute in at any uh, any opportunity. And I got it wrong saying that Zaptius was a substitute. I don't really know where I got Zaptius being a substitute from. Um, obviously made that up somehow in my mind, but it was called a journey and gravity on that team. And we, we don't see journey as far as I'm aware on any, you know, game battles teams right now. So it seems like he's going to be the dedicated sixth man for this squad if they need it. So thanks very much for that correction. Appreciate any corrections in the comment section below. I do my best to read to read every single one. Um, so yeah, what are your hot takes? Which team? So if we've gone through the top three teams, which of those do you think isn't going to be so good? Um, personally, out of these three, it's difficult to say. Uh, maybe Chicago Huntsman won't be quite as good. Maybe they'll be like top six or top five or something at times. Um, that obviously is very difficult to say at the start of the season. I'm sure some of you guys will have hot takes down below that, you know, blow it out the park. Uh, but preseason is very tough to say. Which of the other teams, though, do you think, you know, Optic Gaming LA was another one that people, you know, considered to be you know, really good squads. Um, I think some of the issues with Huntsman may be this whole Gunless situation. We'll have to see how it goes. But Gunless has been a very interesting, um, you know, interesting individual, right? Such a fantastically talented player. But way back in Infinite Warfare and even more recently from this lost, you know, um, Luminosity Gaming team, like benching himself and issues with toxicity and these kind of things with teammates and uh, formal supposedly saying that Gunless, teaming with Gunless in, uh, in Black Ops 4 was one of the worst decisions he ever made to go back and teaming with him again. I can imagine if the results don't start you know, playing up to their ideal potential, um, Gunless might start to think, you know, what am I doing here? And there's honestly that potential is on the card. So I think that if Chicago Huntsman don't do so well, there is the possibility halfway through the season for Gunless to either be, leave the team or the team gets broken up or something to that effect. I can imagine that happens in some worlds, um, but it's not overwhelmingly likely. I don't want to go out and say a hot take that guarantee they will do that, uh, but definitely it's something in the back of my mind. Of the rest of the teams though, which of these teams do you think has the best chance to do something special? Like which of these squads do you think could be you know, a dark horse really good one? I think Minnesota is a good one actually to keep your eyes on. There's a couple of teams like 
you know, subliners and Seattle Surge people are expecting to do quite well. The other teams most people have in the, in their bottom half, right? So I guess the top six would be, you know, FaZe Huntsman, Empire, Opta Gaming, Los Angeles, subliners and Surge. I guess most people put in their top six. Quite difficult to say though. I do think though the Minnesota Rocker is a team that does have potential. We've seen these individuals in the past, usually alongside Eggs, you know, Silly and Assault, for example, that have done really great things in these kind of you know, tend to be slower boots on the ground titles. Last time in World War II, of course, they were world champions. Now they're joined by Alex, who was phenomenal in World War II, even though I did say earlier in the video that, you know, maybe this game won't play so much like World War II. We'll have to see. Um, God RX was a fantastic player last season, and Asim really was a good role player. If they can get him to slow down a bit, they have Saint as coach. Hopefully he can help, um, you know, get Asim playing on the right kind of playing field and the right pacing for this game. In, in an ideal world, I can already see Minnesota Rocker putting on a clinic here. I'd like to say the same for London Royal Ravens, and I think there's a possibility. Definitely some underdog potential here. Now, another question, right? Which individual do you think is going to get substituted out of a team, which is unexpected? Or which, you know, which crazy change might we see in the upcoming season that a lot of people aren't expecting? So to go through some of Reddit's thoughts, then close to half the teams are going to have role confusions. Definitely some possibility here. Of course, when these teams are formed, there wasn't really a thought to exactly what the meta would be. I think the way it works right now, most teams shouldn't be too bad. But when we do get into a LAN environment and proper practice comes into play, the meta is still going to evolve over time. We're going to have to see what people start using. Definitely role confusions could be on the table. Um, thought this is an interesting take as well. Pros will troll in league games because the game is borderline unplayable and they get paid regardless. I doubt this will be the case. And of course, now they're not really league games. They're more tournament style. So if you win, you actually get more of an opportunity to win the entire tournament weekend. So I doubt this will happen as much. Um, but as was mentioned here, back in the online league for Black Ops 3, that did happen. There was this 100 Thieves game um, that, you know, was played. I remember they were using like Argus's and all of this stuff that Aix's 100 Thieves employed against Optic Gaming. Optic won in like a game five round 11. And it was quite the drama at the time. I mean, yeah, this take from Esteban Bugatti, you know, Chicago will trade gunless. Minnesota are going to be amazing. The game will turn out to be semi enjoyable. I actually kind of like this hot take. Um, I can't say I play much of the game at all. I can't say I watch much of the game, particularly don't find it particularly enjoyable on the whole. But I do believe when the league rolls around, as, uh, you know, Rimbop returns goes into here, once the game comes around, once the league matches start, people's opinion of the game will improve because there's some actually meaning matches, you know, meaningful matches to watch and talk about. And nowadays, they're more than semi-meaningful. Um, so I think the game does still have potential. I think it's still pretty awful from a competitive standpoint. Hopefully, through the course of the season, we will have some, some you know, better sides of things. I thought this is an interesting take as well. All gunners will sue Activision because they sold them a dream about franchising and how many viewers it'll pull, but no one's going to watch the game because it sucks for common heart. The stuff is GA's. Um, I don't think they'll really have any grounds to sue Activision on, uh, but it would be interesting to see them try. I highly doubt that'll even happen though. Um, so yeah, just to go back to this for the final time, which substitute changes do you think would be feasible? I love how Maniac here was actually listed as a substitute, even though that's uh, realistically never going to happen. Which team do you think it's possible? Maybe on one of the top teams, I I doubt anything is going to happen on the Dallas Empire, to be honest. I do think up to gaming Los Angeles, Chino has a decent chance of being substituted in for JCAP, but I'm not necessarily saying that's a particularly hot take, right? Because, um, you know, at the current time, it's difficult to say. The real question, I wonder, is on the Seattle search, because there's a couple of guys on there, the likes of Apathy, you know, Enable, Karma, for example, that are definitely, I guess, in the latter half of their career, and maybe aren't playing the same Call of Duty that they did. Is it a particularly hot take to say one of them will get swapped out for a Panda or a Proto, maybe most likely Panda, um, depending on how they do in the upcoming season. Yes, this game might suit them quite well. At the same time, though, you know, maybe they're getting old and they think they need some younger talent in the team. They need some really quick players um, and slack to apathy kind of do fulfill that role. So maybe Proto doesn't necessarily have as much to be thinking about, but maybe some of the individuals they think uh, it depends how Enable plays. Personally, I think Enable's a fantastic player. Um, I doubt this will even happen, but you never know. There's a possibility that if things don't go up to scratch, things could happen in the game and they might decide a substitute is worth giving it a go if the results don't go in their favour. But yeah, be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Leave them all there. Like if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'll read through your comments and interact with them as best I can. Thanks for watching as always. Enjoy your week. I'll see you next time.